Welcome back to the BMW 330 Diesel Touring Track Project Series. You join us in episode three. I'm here with John Benson from Tire Reviews. And as you can see, we've got some brand new wheels and tires for the 330 diesel. These are the old ones. These are the new ones that are gonna be going on the car today. So it's gonna be really interesting to find out how many seconds or milliseconds we can shave off with this wheel and tire combination. The reason why John is here is because I asked his advice on which wheels and tires to get. So starting with tires, John, Nankang NS2Rs, why are they good? They are a good value track day tire and they're not a full track day tire. So Nankang have the AR1, which is a, like a super sticky Treadwear 80. Uh, these are Treadwear 180 compared to those, which would be about 300, which just kind of gives you a general guide of how soft and sticky the rubber is. So these are a good road tire that you can use on track and they'll shave some time off. What makes a good track tire? Okay, so how they differ to a normal tire is sort of two main ways. You've got like a much stiffer carcass. So like the actual construction of the tire is stiffer so you don't roll onto the sidewalls. Like you probably have been on those. You can see the edges of those tires. I mean, they're pretty done. Whereas these, the sidewall's much stronger, so you won't have that problem. And the tread cap's stiffer as well. And then you've got compound. So you've got a softer compound, which will warm up and give you more grip. With a track tire like this, is it a case that you can buy them and just go and smash a track, or do you have to run them in? Generally, these things, they're good to go from the out. They're not like slicks where you should really heat cycle them. The only thing you've got to think about these is they sometimes like slightly different pressures and slightly different cambers. So these will work with stock pressures, but the more aggressive tire you go, sometimes you need a bit more camber especially at the rear and pressures whereas those will be sort of maybe 32 34 cold pressures and that's how you run them on the road what we're going to do today is heat these up and then set these to like maybe 31 33 so the hot pressures and then balance the car on the pressures so if you're getting a bit too much oversteer we can take some pressure out the back and give you a bit more grip there so there's options to play around to help your driving the idea for pressures and cambers is to get a nice even use of the tire and what you want is you want the outside, middle and inside within ideally about 10 degrees of each other. We've got these 1552 rims here. Interestingly, John said that I should go up from a 17 inch to an 18 inch. Explain why. Because race car. Obviously. <laughs> now, um, 18s look a bit better. What you get with a bigger rim size is a little bit less sidewall. So uh, what we don't want to be doing, especially with this car where power's not maybe huge, is we don't want to be increasing the circumference of the wheel and tire combination. So going up to a 19 or 20, you'd end up with rubber band tires to try and keep it the same. Because what that does increases the overall final drive. So your acceleration gets slower and your top speed gets a little bit higher. But for this course, you don't want that. So we've actually dropped it by about a percent on the rear. So 1% more acceleration, it's like free power. And the 18 inch just gives you a nice sort of blend of sidewall stiffness and weight, because weight's super important as well. So we've got these 1552 wheels here. Uh, talk to me quickly about design are some wheels better at cooling brakes or taking air away from brakes? There's a couple of wheel designs that have been used in the past. There's E34 M5 had turbine wheels, which at the time no one liked, but I think they look super cool. And I think the SLR had turbine wheels as well to help, but it's, it's not really a big effect. Like if you want to cool your brakes, you generally punch out a hole in the front of the car, uh, put some ducting to a wheel arch so it blows onto the brake disc and then that'll exhaust the air out the side. So we all know that saving weight is important, but what about rotational mass? Yeah, so with wheels, the further away from the center point, you can save weight, so tires especially. So if you save like a kilo off the tire, which is sort of like this level, it's like saving two, two and a half kilos of acceleration and braking weight. So again, it's just, it's free power essentially. You're, you're using less energy to move the car forward and backwards, which is great. Um, it also obviously reduces unsprung weight. The, the less weight you can have in your wheel and tire package, less unsprung weight, the less the suspension has to do and the happier the car is, especially driving hard. One other thing uh, that's important, especially to do with weight, is how the wheels are made. You've got like cast wheels, which are kind of like the standard wheels where molten aluminium is just poured into a cast, let cool down. Problem with casting is you get like air pockets and bubbles in the wheel, so you lose strength, which means they have to be thicker and heavier, so weight is bad. Forged is the ultimate, and that's where they just literally get a billet block of aluminium and machine it and press it, and it's just like the coolest thing ever. And you're gonna save like maybe 30, 40% of weight over a cast wheel, but they're probably 40, 50% more expensive. And then there's a newer way called Flow Formed. It's a kind of a mix of, you cast a wheel to be bigger than it should be, or into a, like a primitive wheel, and then you roll it out under heat and pressure, so you get, 
like the a bit of weight saving like a forge but it's cheaper like a car so it's a kind of sitting in the middle and then you used to be able to get magnesium wheels amazing like even lighter super strong but there were problems with the tires blowing out and then as the magnesium sort of scraped along the floor in the event of a blowout it could set on fire and then you'd have a a, a wheel fire which isn't so good so magnesium doesn't get used so much on the road anymore when i asked you which tire sizes to get you said go for staggered so we've got 225 here for the front and 255 for the rear why is that a good thing um bmw from factory offer both the square so you've got 225 all round and that's the width and a staggered option for the more high power cars and as you're going to add loads of boost and loads of power to this beast i thought it'd be a nice idea to get back to the original sort of staggered ethos that will give you a bit more regret Right, so we're going to put these wheels and tyres onto the 330 diesel track project in a second. Mm -hmm. Last question though, how many seconds do you think we're going to be saving with these? Most important question. If we can get the car balanced nicely and these up to temperature, I reckon about a second. So we'll be breaking into the 38s. So we could, at the end of this episode, be about a second and a half away from your E92 M3. <laughs> I'm going to have to come back with stickier tyres at some point. That's really awkward for you, isn't it? <laughs> All right, John, thanks very much. Thank you. Before we go and put these wheels and tyres on to test times, uh, remember, guys, you can buy these exact wheels on the Car Throttle Shop, so go check them out. Anyway, let's go find out. Let's go do this. I'm hoping for big improvements, but I'm ready, John. Count me in, let us do this, and let's see how far we can improve these lap times by. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, Deasley will spin start. Way more grip than with the old tires. Those wheels look a lot better rotating than they do static, don't they? This week, everything just feels so much better set up and more compliant. Oh, he's on the grass, he says. Oh, would you like to know what your time is? I'm going to guess it was a 39.9. Oh, better than he thinks. It was a 39.47, so a 39.5. So you've saved three tenths off the last episode immediately. Already, that's not bad. That's not bad. And my start was really quite poor. I need to uh, start at about 2,000 RPM. I think I was a bit too high there. Okay, run two in three, two, one, go. Right, not gonna talk. Let's just concentrate on this lap. Wider than I'd have liked there. All right, let's try this in third. The front end is so much stickier than it was. Come on. All right, let's push here. Come on, come on, come on. Right, that was uh, fairly messy you have improved a little bit to a 39.41. So I think there's more time to be had. There is definitely more time to be had. I'd need to be smoother, especially at that first left-hander. Should we check the tire pressures first? Cause I'll be getting kind of hot. Shall I come to you? Yeah, it's quicker than me running to you. How's the balance? Feels good. It still feels a little bit loose on the rear. We'll try and put a few less PSI in the back, depending on where things are. So we started off with 32. 32, yeah, it's come up to 32.3 on the front, but we'll leave that there. And maybe just drop the rear a tiny little bit. Yeah, 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8. 30.8.
30.8, okay. So 1.2 out of the rear should give you a little bit more grip at the back. Sweet. Car feels really good though. It feels a lot faster. So hopefully if I'm a bit smoother, I mean, I'm pretty much a racing driver. Right? Ah, we'll find out. So I've just let a PSI out of each rear tire just to hopefully give them slightly more grip at the rear uh, to stop the oversteer he's having. Okay, final lap in three, two, one, go. Oh, wheel spin, but not as much as the first run. That wasn't as good as the second run launch, though. Go on. This looks better than the second run. That's fast. Oh! He's gonna be happy. How do you think that went, Alex? I was maybe too committed on the last corner. I think the rest of the lap felt okay though, uh, hit me. I thought you were actually gonna hit me on that last corner, but you did a 38.45. Are you shitting me? That's what the clock says, you've done it. <clears throat> oh my God. So I've literally just taken a second out. A whole second, well done. That's incredible. And that, that must also have something to do with uh, reducing the, the pressure on the rear. Yeah, I'm gonna take credit for this. It was me, well done. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yes. I'm so happy with I'm that. So happy. Good job, old girl. What was your time? 32 something. <laughs> so the moral of the story is, if you wanna buy an E92 M3, buy an E46 330 diesel instead. So let's take a closer look at the laps and compare the differences between the 330D with coilovers and standard wheels and tires versus the 330D with coilovers and the larger 1552 wheels with sticky Nankang NS2R tires. At the first fast left bend, the sticky tires ensure that the 330D doesn't wash as wide in preparation for the right-hander. And thanks to the larger diameter wheels, there isn't as much tire flex as standard, which helps keep the car more balanced. From the front, you can also see that turn-in is now sharper, meaning that the Eibach coilovers are now being used to full effect. Inside the car is where things get really interesting. See how I'm hacking at the wheel in the top half of the screen? That's because I'm constantly having to correct because the standard tires can't cope with the increased traction demand of the coilovers. In the bottom half of the screen, however, my steering inputs are way smoother because the tires and coilovers are now working together as well as Batman and Robin. And as we all know, smooth driving equals fast driving. Back outside the car, and now with the hairpin in shot, you'll notice that Gareth makes it round more quickly than before with less slip at the rear, which helps slingshot me faster into the tricky left-right transition before the finish line. These precious milliseconds saved on all parts of the track add up to a big improvement, and although my line at the bottom of the screen wasn't as clean as I'd have liked, we saved a big chunk of time. With a few more episodes, we'll have the E92 M3's lap time in the bag. Right, so John, we've had an amazing result today, haven't Incredible. we? Incredible, yeah, good Absol work. Absolutely awesome. So last week we had a best time of 39.85 and we improved that by about one and a half seconds to 38.45. Correct, yeah. So we've done it just before the heavens have started opening. Really, really happy with the results. What are your thoughts? Yeah, better than I expected. I thought it'd be about a second. I think you absolutely nailed that last lap and like excellent result. Next week, we will be installing brand new brake pads and brake discs. So we should be getting slightly better times. Hopefully we're gonna find out next week. Don't forget guys to check out more videos from the series. Click here. To subscribe to Car Throttle and Tire Reviews, click here. And don't forget that everything that you see on this car, you can now buy on the Car Throttle Shop. The link for that is right here. You can flex at the area. No. Not, not too much flex. Oh, I'm flexed out. Oh, I'm rained out. <laughs>